All right, good evening, everybody. System Chalk here with, I believe, this uh, 11th episode of the story of Lord Percival Stab, the physician. So I've talked a little bit in the past about how uh, I'm struggling a little bit to get everything recorded on time. So it's, I'm coming in a little bit, uh, a little bit lost again. Um, <clears throat> and I do see on the board there's going to be a few things that I need to deal with. So those of you watching in a big line, uh, it's going to be a bit of a recap for those of you who watch as these things get released. This may not be a bad, uh, bad reminder of where we're at. So uh, with Connie, uh, this was just an effort to try and attempt. Um, actually, don't know if this is where I was at in the previous one, but um, I think I'd uh, I'd tried to. Um, I think it was, exp if I recall correctly, outside of um, <clears throat> outside of the broadcast, I was just double checking. So uh, sorry, uh, I should I should move back. I'm trying to remember where I got this idea of 21 Edge. Oh, is it here? Yeah, no, it totally is. Um, so Connie is a bit special because of resentment, but we'll uh, we'll worry about that later. So uh, the thing that I'm most worried about right now is the fascination. Uh, we are currently in the season of dread, and we do have one despair that is feeding this. So I need to generate contentment somehow. Now it looks like we're already doing a painting. So not only are we removing the old unhappy or the restlessness from old unhappy far off things, but hopefully we will produce a contentment. <clears throat> now, one thing that might work out. Well, yeah, I was just thinking there's a few combinations as far as dread and, and whatnot is concerned. But you know what? Let's just well, I'm going to deal with this in a, a very straightforward, uh, very straightforward way. I am going to probably just let this fascination decay on its own. We've got 20 seconds before another season, so there is a very, very slight chance that this fascination will be a threat. Um, the situation where that would be a threat would be if the uh, next season is a season of visions, because we've got 20 second, uh, 20.2 seconds before the season of visions would come up, but 81 seconds before the fascination goes away. And in that particular situation, because we've got two fascination on the table, it would be wise to maybe recruit one of the, sorry, change the order, uh, recruit one of the hangers on. But the likelihood of that happening is, is pretty low. We also are going to have a few things in our favor. And number one will be when the dread goes away, we'll get a fleeting reminiscence that will eliminate one fascination. We'll have the old and happy far off things affect restlessness. So if we don't need to worry about despair, that can decay into a dread. And as a consequence, that's going to uh, also tranquilize a fascination. And so out of those two on its own, uh, we can get rid of two fascination. But notice that a lot of this is still kind of hanging on the assumption that I am going to generate a contentment. That hasn't happened yet. The other thing I want to keep an eye on is my follows, because it seems like we're not currently on an expedition. And more importantly, uh, we do not have a... Like, so I'm thinking right now what happened to the Caligean, because I was under the impression that I had a Caligean to... Take this out. I'm wondering if I maybe forgot to unpause. Hmm. All right, well, uh, one way or the other, um, I'm going to need to try and get something to deal with the damning evidence. I think the approach I'm going to take on this one, I'm going to be... V I'm going to try and be quick with the passage of time. I do know we got the favor of uh, from authority, so the summoning isn't quite as important, but we're already going through the stag door as well. Uh, one thing I might try is Street Strange by Moonlight. Uh, the other thing that I'm considering is uh, Colors of the Night. Now, I'm probably going to wind up generating some mystique out of this. Uh, sorry, of the painting. I'm probably going to generate some mystique out of this, so it may not quite be the time for uh, my heart followers to, to do their thing. Uh, I am, however, going to betray and imprison the hulking fellow. So this one must serve another purpose now. Into the cupboard they go. And I'm debating as to whether or not it's a good idea for me to go to the Ecdysis Club. So that would probably be transferring funds into a um, transferring funds into contentment, but I may still be generating the contentment already. 
So let's hold off on that for now. I could go to Oroflams to turn these into money, uh, but I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to send someone out to investigate. Um, now, not every investigation is made equally here. In this case, uh, depending on who I send out on the expedition or on the on the exploration, uh, I, there may be a side effect. So, for instance, I don't believe Edge provokes any side effects, so I could send Victor, Rose, or Eldridge out. Uh, alternatively, I could send someone like Yuzabet Porter or Sylvia, and that would potentially generate an old, unhappy, far-off things because they are moth aspect. The most practical. Um, sort of side effect is the one that comes from heart because that gives you a vitality that potentially helps you if you wind up with a season of sickness so that's going to be what I do here um, but that's kind of what I mean when I say that uh, exploration isn't isn't equal even if this is just to sort of have time pass and what I'm really hoping for here is streets strange by moonlight because that uh, put, could potentially get me some knock influence but uh, that's that's sort of where uh, that's where if I want to try and stack the side effects to my favor, uh, these are the, the minor considerations that I bring in. Because again, you just wind up doing these kinds of actions a lot of times over and over. So uh, I'm st I believe I was trying to... We've got to the Peacock's door now. I'm still trying to find where I can get higher levels of edge influence or alternative... Or, yeah, higher levels of edge influence or lore. I think the lore is going to be more important overall. Uh, and I don't think it would hurt to get a little more money, although if I can, a summoning for a Caligene to get rid of the evidence would be nice. Again, we've got a little bit of a lease on life on, uh, in the form of the favor from authority, but I don't want to bank on that. See the mistakes, but I can also see the end. And another hireling, so we'll pick that up. And I've locked this one away safely. When their screaming and raving subsides, I will subdue them properly. All right. So let's... I don't remember where I used to put the... I guess I put that up by the damning evidence. Okay, so that was kind of unexpected. Um, <clears throat> I'm debating on how I want to use the talk verb now. Let's, uh, let's repair, repair the cracked noonstone. I don't really need to do that right now, but it gives me a chance to... Um, well, hang on. No, I should keep the talk verb open for another five seconds. My recent work has accrued modest fame. My paintings have reviewed well. Okay, so this is a danger. Actually, it's not as big of a danger as it seems. So I'm gonna... I'm going to take a chance that this favor from authority is going to carry us through. We do have some staleness. I'm going to need to deal with that. And a little bit of money. Okay, so um, if I want to do commissions, now is the time. The consequence of that is going to be more mystique, which I would rather not have to deal with right now. Uh, I think probably going to the Institute for the time being is the right call. And there's my Caligi. <laughs> I'm remembering now. Okay, Subtle Rupture is exactly what I wanted. So it's a little unfortunate on timing. I'm going to have a five second window in which I can do that summoning. But this is exactly what I wanted. So we're good there. In sleep, I ran my fingers along the ridged edges of the stag door scars. Our company it was that shattered it, Girby says suddenly. Before the gods who were flesh, the mansus was forbidden to mortals. We were the first no. He begins again to weep his molten tears. I wish that we had not. I wish I had died in the world. I've forgotten what else he said, but I remember the shape of the fissures in the stag door. And for all of today, doors will fear my touch. So um, you can kind of see in this case, you have the the grant. So you've got, you know, Lord, Lord Stab sitting in the Institute. Um, the weary detectives are, you know, finally they've got they've got what they need. I've I've just exhibited my paintings. You know, you can almost imagine in a, a Hollywood sense, you know, they 
There's the scene where Stab is showing his, his latest composition and the detective's very smug. He knows, knows he's got what he needs. Um, maybe some menacing words uttered at the time and we're 55 seconds away from them springing their chat. But in the meantime, uh, you know, they'll obviously come into the into the um, into the hospital to to make the arrest, and uh, all the while, you know, aha, you have fallen into my trap, and we have the favor from authority to to get us out. That is essentially what we're playing out here. But of course, I don't want to neglect all of my other works. So old and happy far off things, either I need to turn into the dread to get rid of the fast, or actually, no, sorry, the fascination will go away on its own because of the fleeting reminiscence. Well, it won't go away on its own, but we can get rid of it because of the fleeting reminiscence. So we'll probably want to paint paint that away. Um, but then we're, that means that we won't have the subtle rupture. So perhaps I will let that decay to dread, and we will use the fa uh, get rid of the fascination that way, uh, just simply because it's a little more expedient for us. Study-wise, uh, there is definitely a danger of the account of Kanishka at the Spider's Door because uh, this is the sort of thing that I think we can wind up getting a dread from. But we don't have a season of despair coming up. I mean, if we do, it's unlucky. We'll, we'll just have to, to live with it. Uh, Lok Kali, Kanishk's victim and lover, wrote this account, perhaps posthumously. Kanish sought to become a name. In pursuit of that end, he made Lok Kali the vessel of his appetites, promising Lok that they would ascend together. At the spider's door, he betrayed his lover. Oh, uh, you should think a little bit about what I want to do with Dream. So we don't need to try and tranquilize a um, one of the uh, the influences at the moment. So let's, I guess the question is, do I want to try and go through the spider's door or do I want to try and go through the peacock door? Well, I have repaired the wildering mirror, so let's start with the peacock door. In my dreams, I know the path through the glass garden to the peacock's door, the most admirable of doors, the door which shines like a mirror. Perhaps with the right resources, I can pass it. The peacock's door ripples uh, in the mirror I hold in my sleep, and the mirror reflects the peacock's door. Already a sensuous shiver ripples its surface. It aches for fracture, and when it finds that satisfaction, I will enter. Okay, next question is, what do I want to do with the talk verb? Um, we can... we don't need to reserve that for getting rid of fascination. We betrayed the people we need to. So what do I want to accomplish? I guess we can repair that Noonstone again. It's not a priority right now, but it gives me a little extra time. We can begin to repair this, but it will take funds to purchase the necessary materials. A half glimpse wistfulness has touched me. So again, we're going to use the work verb for a summoning. We may not need the Caligene right away, but it'll be helpful to have anyway. There's really no penalty for having one. I should see how long these are going to last, too. We've got 400 seconds on the, the prisoners. It's getting a little crowded in the cupboard, though. Spares the wolf that devours thought. Now, it might seem like I'm going a little too... Uh, a little too far off course as far as... Um, uh, as far as my my priorities are concerned, so what I want to be doing is going through more um, more expeditions if I can. Uh, the The challenge right now is that because I don't have the summons to move forward uh, on the on the different expeditions, the last thing I want to do is uh, you know use one of these forbidden. Actually, I can't remember if we're on forbidden epics or forgotten chronicles. Secret location on the continent, land of beyond. I believe we're on the land beyond the forest. So what I, the last thing I want to do is uh, turn this into a vault and then have a season of ambition come by and one of these renegades uh, scoop it up. So at the moment, I'm just gonna I'm gonna sit on the forbidden epics and we will explore them in due time. But in the meantime, there are a few things we can do, like deal with the damning evidence and uh, just generally get our our mental state a little bit better. And of course, do the summonings. Um, Exploration-wise, though, I did originally do exploration to find a um, 
or to try and get a knock. I suppose we do want to do a second summoning, so it wouldn't hurt to send someone out to explore again. So, and as usual, we'll send Dorothy out or one of the heart followers just because we may get a a heart influence out of the out of the deal. Memories of better times keep the wolf from the door. All right, the city is rife with journalists and detectives and other meddlers. How long will they leave me in peace? And I've done some good. My patients are quieter now than when I began. Okay, so nothing's going to happen to us next um, next period. That's good. I'm going to keep this restlessness aside to uh, match to the fascination when the time comes. Actually, uh, the fascination will go away on its own, which means that I'm going to be up one dread. Okay. Uh, that's inconvenient, but I'm going to power through it. So we will do the sunset right. One of the things that I might have tried, had I been thinking, would be if I take this restlessness. Actually, I don't think I would have enough... Yeah, I wouldn't have knock out of that, so I don't think it would matter. Well, let's just take a quick look. So let's say, theoretically, I would put... Um, let's say Enid in for the sake of the argument. I guess I would need Winter. Oh no, the Voiceless Dead's too powerful. Yeah, so the problem with this one is that it's only got a little forge. So Voiceless Dead would not be bad. Voiceless Dead is actually okay for getting rid of evidence, but it's not, uh, it's not exactly what I need right now. So we'll do what we were planning before. We'll take the subtle rupture. Uh, we probably need the more intense, uh, more intense forge, and then we will add one of our winter disciples. So forge for the smoky spirit summoning, winter for its binding. It must know who will rule it. The reason I'm not bringing in the voiceless dead is I believe they will leave a winter influence behind when they go away, so it, uh, it's not necessarily in my long-term interests to, um, to have, uh, have too many of those running around when I have other options. Uh, the Chiliarch listened to the betrayal and then forced Kanishk into his service. The Chiliarch cannot be denied. Lock Cowley remained to write this work and to describe the outer magics of struggle and contest. So we've got the Operation of the Labite, a series of mystic exercises that require both dedication and terror. So if I wanted, I could try and upgrade this. The challenge is, of course, is I already have the Colonel's names, which I could upgrade to the Lionsmith's names, which I could then upgrade to another level, but it's still uh, 12. So if I recall correctly. So that would take us up to 14, but the but Betty's Blade would not... Actually... Yeah, if we move the colonel's names up. Oh yes, that... Uh, act, okay, this this is going to turn out for me. Um, I had forgotten that... Okay, so we have the silent intensity. Interesting. This is a lot easier to upgrade than I thought. Okay, well, we will we'll deal with that when we can. Uh, right now, I'm going to take care of the sky, the soul. The grand labor of Cal, an ascetic poet writing in the court of the shadowless kings. Cal's verses are brief, obscure, and often dominated by images of violence. A star is a pinprick, but the sun is a wound. Okay, so I could go for the unresolved ambiguity right away. That will... Um, I mean, that's not a bad lore for me to pick up by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, the Worm Museum, I think... The only two things I know for sure are the next level of Secret Histories lore and Dread. Turns out I don't actually need Dread as much as I thought I, uh, I did. Then the Red Church, I believe, can potentially give me fascination. It's either the Peacock Door itself or the Red Church that might give me fascination. Uh, Amaranthine Nectar, um, Grail. Oh, actually, maybe it's Lantern uh, Influence. I think Winter Influence might come through the Worm Museum now that I think of it. Um, I don't believe we can get Vac. 
because that would be at the peacock door. And uh, potentially a favor from authority for the Red Church, which, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not opposed to picking up unresolved ambiguities, but I think the Red Church has a little bit more of a potential reward to make it worthwhile. Cool. So yes, there is winter influence from the War Museum. So we've got a Vagabond's map. The Vagabond is the one hour who can never enter the Mansus, but she goes everywhere else. And if you believe her boasts, she's the only one who knows all of the histories. Sometimes she lets someone record her travels. I saw the Red Church again last night, with its pews of bone, the stained glass and shades of ruby, the golden altar that beats like a heart. That night, the names of the Grail gathered to speak of those long who'd sworn off the pleasures of the bedchamber, save between a man and a man, or a woman and a woman. They still pay the tribute of delight, an ivory said. They do not bear fruit, a lovely said. If Forge and Son had only joined, a thirstly lamented. And then they fell to gossiping of the long in the house of Leith, and their deeds in the desert. I remember it still. So yeah, picking up unresolved ambiguities is actually not a bad idea because we'll definitely need more than a few of those. Uh, we now have a broken mirror, so a chat with Valsine in the future uh, is probably coming up. And we do have Street Strange by Moonlight, so if I want to do some exploration, and I think I do, uh, we may get some uh, we may get some knock for our, our efforts. So the next question, as always, is what do I want to do with my dream verb? Because this is really, it's so interesting to be to this, uh, for me to be at this point, because normally I skip the spider's door and I really have three places that can potentially give me interesting uh, items. The peacock's door can potentially give me a language. It can give me unresolved ambiguities, which I need, and vagabond's maps, which I need. Um, the spider's door... My best guess here is this was where I would find, out of anything, this is where I would find higher edge uh, influence if I can find it. That's a big if. Uh, and then on top of that, the Mallory has um, a, uh, a forge, sort of a forge ingredient that uh, I could potentially use. And then, of course, the stag door has uh, sort of the standard, it, that's kind of my go-to in terms of where I've been visiting. And again, I know I can get um, knock out of that and such. So all three of these are useful to me. Um, the prisoner, I'm, I'm getting quite a collection of prisoners, so normally I would use them for the spider's door, but I might actually use them in terms of upgrading the lore. Uh, for the time being, though, let's try the spider's door because I do want to learn it a little bit better. So, in my dreams I know the path through the silken stands to the spider's door. If I slake its thirst by spilling fresh blood before I sleep, it will open to me. So, I believe this is the earliest... Nope. Sorry, hapless prisoner. Actually... Oh, no, no. Yeah, sorry. For some reason I thought that uh, there was a different, um, different set of uh, influences, but they are the same. I don't. I know this isn't exactly what some people are looking for when it comes to lore, but here's some examples in terms of how I like to try and sort of parse what certain things mean or or what they like. <clears throat> I don't think there is a definitive way of thinking about this game, and I don't think there is necessarily a like. I, I think it's probably against the spirit and and the most interesting way of playing this game to assume that there could be some forum at which uh, you, you know there's one person where you can point to and say this person is right in the authority and everything that they say about this is true. The author may be, you know, an exception, but um, I'm sure, you know, the Discord is probably, um, like, presumably that would have already been said if, if there was uh, interest in having, um, you know, like, I'm assuming in the Discord there'd be, like, a big a big um, list of, you know, hello, here are the definitive answers to all of these these items. But what I what I kind of try and do is think about well why you know why do some of these um, elements appear now I'm gonna maybe create a little bit of a challenge for myself uh, because I I may be not so good at explaining uh, these other two influences but I think Grail is a really good example um, of why you know why this influence is here so hunger lust of the drowning waters the principle of the Grail honors both the birth and the feast. So if you consider all of the different associations with desire, uh, sorry, all, like all of the different associations with desire in terms of, um, in terms of the grail, uh, clearly somebody who's imprisoned, there is going to be some, 
some of the Grail's influence here. Uh, and if you are having some difficulty understanding why, consider when you go to the Lone and Level Sands and you need to pass a, you know, you, you need to pass through the, the desert section, you have two options. You can use Forge, and again, this is sort of what humans are very good at, shaping tools and, and devices that will allow you to overcome uh, otherwise inhospitable areas. Or, again, you invoke the power of the Grail. And of course, the Grail is satisfying, I believe it is actually explicit in terms of saying that it satisfies your needs in the desert. And so it's very reasonable to say that a uh, you know, prisoner desires escape. And so this would be why you're seeing the Grail influence. Uh, heart, so the heart relentless beats to protect the skin of the world. We understand the heart is the principle that continues and preserves. And then Lantern, uh, life is a pure flame, and we live by an invisible sun within us. Thomas Brown, Lantern is the principle of the secret place, sometimes called the house of the sun and the light above it. I have a couple of guesses as to this. Um, the thing that I want to also be clear, but I, I'm I'm keeping that to myself just because I'd, I'd actually, I, I kind of just thought about this as, as I was going through, and I don't want a casual comment that I make to like try and make sense of it. Um, to suddenly turn into sort of something that kind of sends people on a wild goose chase. I'd probably want to sit down and think about it a little bit, but one thing that's also important to remember is that, uh, for at least for me, whenever I try and sort of piece through some of the lore, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't always necessarily go looking for the mapping in the real world. So, for instance, I think it's very easy to understand. Like, I, I would say that <clears throat> your best... You would have a best guess, uh, you know, if you didn't look at the card, that reason would be associated with lantern, passion would be associated with moth, and heart uh, health would be associated with heart. You know, passion might be the one that's a little bit of a, a trick, but in these cases, I think it's fairly, I think it's fairly, um, fairly intuitive. Um, I suppose I would argue, uh, in the case of prisoners. Knock would be very inappropriate because, of course, knock is the opposite. And I, I would say it's like, well, maybe knock subverts into heart, except it doesn't. Knock is actually an absorbing state where everything will turn into knock if you allow it. Um, so again, that's kind of why I'm I'm hesitating to talk about uh, about heart in particular. But the the thing is, is that uh, I find it most intuitive for me and, and probably the easiest to explain when I look for those mappings of sort of the real world. And again, the idea that, you know, you have a sudden flash of inspiration. Well, you know, that's just a little moth that, that you were touched by for that particular moment. Or, you know, doors keep opening, you can't keep your shoelaces tied. You know, there's knock influence nearby. Um, and and that's be again, that's being felt. Uh, or, you know, even again, the opening of wounds and such. But these are not the only times where the aspects come up and are relevant. Uh, for instance, when you consider, uh, whenever you're trying to cross the sea, it's very similar to the desert sections. You have the option of using forge, and again, you're producing tools and mechanisms that will get you over that challenge. But in the case of the sea, you will use heart. Now, again, you can maybe say it's like, okay, well, it's about continues and preserves. It's like, you know, we're, you know, life preservers or we're preserving ourselves through the water or that. It doesn't really, it doesn't really seem to kind of hang together quite the same way that, you know, using knock on a, on a sealed door kind of makes sense. But once you start considering the number of associations uh, with heart and the sea, um, and there's a few references of it inside of the, the lore and the text, um, that's where that will suddenly make quite a bit more sense. So um, that's, I know that's not exactly what people are kind of looking for sometimes when we talk about lore and that, but that's some of the ways that when I, like I don't often sit down and like directly think, like I don't kind of sit down and say like, okay, today I'm going to think about, you know, the recitation of Lost Hours. But uh, whenever I want to try and maybe make a little more sense, or if there's a line that seems like there is some content in there that I'm missing. Some of the things that I look for are what are some different aspects that this has been associated with. Like if I open a vault and I wind up with an influence from that vault, there's something that's being said about that place. Um, you know, certain, certain texts will produce certain outcomes. And again, 
you you want to you want to pay attention to things like that um, because the the connections that you wind up making are very much I mean they're they're humans they're actually only ones that humans can make and there's a little bit more I was going to say about that but I've kind of halted the playthrough for a little bit so we'll we'll carry on uh, for the time being the spider's door is always thirsty always the blood I have given leaks and threads and spills through the skin of the world and the door drinks it in a moment's satisfaction swells its opening until I can pass Okay, and we need... Oh, just funds. Okay. It's cheaper than I thought. And the wolf despair prowls elsewhere. No dread empowers this despair. It's over for now. Alright, so they found the notoriety. I'm not too worried about that. As it's only if the favor from authority goes away. Which, again, there is the danger of that happening. So I am, I am taking a risk. It depends how long it takes for someone to wind up in the dock. So it's actually good that that notoriety got picked up as soon as possible. Maybe if it was a... How long lived is it? Oh, yep, it's my newest. So that's possibly the best outcome I could have hoped for. Visions pass me with Pavane Grace. A window over a wood, a garden of ice, a shivering sun, a woman of glass. I will return home with reluctance. You know, for a playthrough where I'm spending a little bit more time chatting, uh, I'm actually really getting some good results here. So we've got uh, Knock every time that we've wanted one. We've got the best notoriety that, or the most, the, the notoriety that I wanted to have taken up was the one that the, uh, the detective took. Um, it's looking, looking pretty good. Let's uh, betray the bomb maker for a start. This one must serve another purpose now. Into the cupboard they go. And the more important question is what do I want to do with the explorer verb? Because I am going to have a, I am going to have a summon pretty soon. I think I'm going to wait the 22 seconds. Um, that's going to be bad for my Caligine when I when it comes in. But I do want to see whether or not a season of ambitions is coming. Adversary has uh, convinced. Uh, sorry, has convinced the Suppression Bureau to consider my case. The Bureau is charged with punishment of the less usual type of crime, the criminal whose crimes may exist only in dreams. I've locked this one away safely. When their screaming and raving subsides, I will subdue them properly. Okay. Sorry, I forgot what I was going to do with the talk verb again. Getting the mirror repaired is probably the best option. But I just want to make sure that I'm not locking myself into a particular, a particular choice I'm going to regret. Let's go for it. Significant conversations in a smoky meeting room. What do I need from my follower? We can begin to repair this, but it will take at least a bronze Mitraya to purchase the necessary materials. I'll keep the Explorer verb open. Um, maybe I'll just put the Caligine in on exploration. Ah, no, that's not going to work. All right. Well, that didn't uh, that didn't turn out for us. Um, Subtle Fracture is going to last long enough, so in this case I will use Reason to get rid of it. It's just simply because I don't have the likelihood of, uh, of an escape, escape creature taking something that I need is, uh, is very, very high, uh, just because I haven't, haven't got hangers on, so... Pounding airs, uh, heart moves, the world moves. Uh, I think I'm just going to go to the Mallory. I'm going to keep going to the Mallory because it's produced the most common things that I say, oh, it would have been nice to get that. Um, but if I can get some evidence that the Chamber of Ways has something that I need, I will definitely change that pattern. Well, we were rewarded with an unresolved ambiguity. So, in the Mansus, the hours strive one against another. As the struggles are resolved, they iron out the impossible, exalt the possible, tie the fraying braids of what has been into one golden ribbon of future. Everything is resolved, history becomes past. There are, however, exceptions. Last night in the Mansus, I visited the Mallory, from whose hammers and crucibles one does not emerge unchanged, and for nine beats my heart ceased while it entered the fires of the forge, and the passions of the forge entered into it. 
I woke with the dawn, and its poor divided colors inspire uh, memories of the forge's passion for the sun, of the vagabond's curse, of the grail's deep longing. So many half memories. This is maybe another example. Again, I'm not going to go as in depth in terms of the lore on this, but so what? Where are the hooks on this particular line? Because there's there's quite a bit here, but you definitely don't have enough to go on your own. So what are some of the conce uh, concepts that I would pick up? Well, we kind of have talked about the Mantis since the very beginning of the game. So we we don't necessarily get any information that we didn't already have from the context of the dream, like the fact that we were going into a dream. Um, so we've got the Mallory. Um, number one, the fact that it's, you know, hammers and crucibles. It's like, okay, well, we're probably dealing with something forge-oriented. And of course, we'll... Um, will uh will have more to say about that um so it does not emerge unchained for nine beats my heart uh ceased while it enters the fires of the forge so forge especially capitalized okay we've got a lore reference the passions of the forge entered into it i woke with a dawn uh, and it's poor divided colors right so we're referring to a dawn where like if it if it's not obvious Talking about divided colors is likely going to be referring to uh, the divided sun, not our sun. Um, inspire memories of the forge's passion for the sun and uh, of the vagabond's curse of the grail's deep longing. So many half memories. So um, there's the reference to the heart is an interesting one. I believe I'd actually be interested in seeing um, seeing it because there's a like if you notice there's sort of an opposition between the two principles right so uh, heart you've got the principle that continues and preserves forge the principle that transforms and destroys so oppo two opposing um concepts here um of course it's referring to your heart so you know in that case you may not necessarily be making as a directive a reference but no i do i do believe that there is a, a specific um bit of information here now the thing about this is that um, this is not something on its own. And I think generally when you're trying to figure out about where where you're going in this game, when you want to try and put these things together. And again, notice, I'm, 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 I'm sorry if this... I always run the risk where if I spend time talking about this, but I don't sort of put my foot down and say, this thing means this, it becomes very frustrating to have so much time of a video uh, spent on this. One of the reasons I'm trying to avoid doing that is, one, I don't know really any better than anybody else who plays the game, right? I don't have any information that isn't already available to other people. And there's definitely people who've thought about this game and the world behind it a lot more than I have. Uh, but the other thing is, is that I think there's some value in getting some ideas about how to approach it and draw your own conclusions as opposed to... Um, you know, leading someone down the path towards your your own conclusions, um, because I'm most likely going to have missed things or have a false impression, and so you know, being able to sort of say it's like, okay, so what what do I do when I want to try and understand a little bit more? It's like this isn't enough on its own, but I now have a few bits of information that might feed into other references that I want to um, that I want to pick up. For instance, so we say forge's passion for the sun. It's like, okay, um, I'm now going to want to try and take a look at other references between the Forge and the Sun. There might be a book that I now read that refers to a reference between the Forge and the Sun, and that's going to unpack a little bit more of this particular meaning. Uh, Vagabond's Curse. What is the Vagabond's Curse? Well, we have seen references to the Vagabond in Secret Histories, so that's maybe a place that we're going to want to look if we want to find out some more about it, or if we want to find out more about it. But again, we've got another potential hook where we can say, all right, we're either going to actively look for this or when we see references to the Vagabond, we know of the existence of the Vagabond's Curse. And if we want to learn more about it, we keep our eyes out for that. Um, and of the Grail's Deep Longing. Well, this one maybe is a little bit harder because it could just simply be referring to um, something that is an aspect of the Grail already. But... Um, there are actually some more explicit references to a specific longing for the grail, and that could be what that's uh, being referred to as well. So 
What I try and do here, there's lots of bits of text like this. And so one of the things that is helpful, whether you like to write things down in a notebook or you just kind of try and keep them all in your head and then you have just kind of an, oh yeah, I remember there was something about that there. That's a little bit about how I start to navigate the lore of this game. Um, you're never going to get the whole picture from one uh, one segment, but much like your character is taking all these different fragments and putting them together to try and find meaning, these are some other ways that I pick up on them. There's the inference that you draw from sort of when or where something happens. There are explicit reference. There are some t more subtle references. So for instance, if you know the Vagabond by another name, if you know the Forge by another name, if you know the Sun by another name, Grail by another name, you can potentially unlock a whole bunch of other references through being able to find those um, you know, those connections. So for instance, the Stag Door, but also there's a reference to the Hunter's Door. And so far as I can tell, those are the same thing. But uh, I just wanted to try. I noted there was quite a, a, a few interesting references to lore in the, in the um, comments recently. So I did want to try and take some time to specifically say, it's like, okay, so here are some places that I've looked and here are some ways that I, I engage with this material. It is always possible to be, de uh, sorry, it is always possible to be deader, Cal states. The Watchman goes before, none but seven may go after. Yet surely we are born to the glory and the sparks fly upwards. Sorry, one second here. So um, here is, again, I'm not going to do this for every bit of lore, but just because I, 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 this is coming immediately after I talked about this. Here's one inference you may want to draw. Like this, this is coming completely out of nowhere. So, you know, take take it with a grain of salt. So it's always possible to be dead or Cal states. The Watchman goes before, none but seven may go after. Yet surely we are born uh, to the glory as the sparks fly upward. So, if we associate the Watchman with Lantern. Let's count the number of uh, types of lore. Grail, one, heart, two, edge, three, winter, four, forge, five, um, Moth, six. Knock, seven. So, this is kind of relying on something of a bit of a debate. Um, I don't know if it counts as a debate or not, but there's the question as to whether or not you consider secret histories to be a proper principle, uh, much like the others. So, the Watchmen... Sorry, Lantern would be eight. If you don't include secret histories... Uh, and, and again, you've got the Watchman's secret here, right? So we're saying Lantern. Well, this can't refer to itself, right? You can't go in front of yourself. At least the game has not indicated that this is uh, a trait of the of the Watchman. So it is possible that this could be references to entities that uh, have a kind of a direct connection to um, you know to each of the various principles. Um, if, on the other hand, you do think that there is a secret history and that there is an entity that specifically aligned with that, either that refers to a specific relationship between the between uh, the Watchmen and whatever equivalent. So it could be that one of them is just simply not allowed to go before, or it possibly means that, um, or I mean, the other the other possibility is that you can't do that direct mapping of the various principles to these different concepts. So what you would then do, like let's say you find that a particularly interesting idea and you want to follow through a little bit more. Well, where, where would you go with that? Well, one, definitely looking a lot into Lantern and taking a look at as many references as you can specifically to the Watchmen uh, would be a way that you, you start unpacking that. If you have other references, um, you could... Or, sorry, if you're looking for other references, maybe you would try and find references to the Watchmen in things that are associated with other aspects. So, for instance, if I were to say, okay, we're trying to kick out an aspect, it's like, well, I know... I think it's um, Moth and Lantern that have that um, that subver subversive relationship. And, of course, like, like a moth to a flame, right? It kind of makes sense. Uh, maybe what you would want to be looking for is a reason why Moth might be... Uh, separated out again this is a fairly arcane one because a lot of this hinges on the secret history but you know why is it little questions like this right why is it seven um anyways we'll also read the lore out of this so formula concursive the concursum waits at the lantern of the mansus it has been called the chamber of ways and also the chamber of endings its intricacies are probably beyond human comprehension but these formula are a first approximation
I will do the Watchman's Secret also just said. It has been expressed as this. Each hour has its color, but color exists only where there, uh, there is light. So um, doesn't help us in terms of uh, that particular that particular puzzle. So I'm trying to think if I want to use this dread or not. Okay, we do have a season of ambition, so it was the right call not to try and take that. Um, it was the right call not to try and uh, take that um, expedition. There are crimes that the state does not openly recognize. I stand accused of one of these. The Suppression Bureau holds its trials in closed court, and they are not merciful. Unless I can take advantage of a connection, I risk imprisonment. Well, that's exactly what we're doing. Okay, so study-wise, we don't have what we need to be able to... So, another reference to the concursum. Um, we do not have uh, Frisian to tra or Vac to translate these, but I was going to talk. I was talking about how I'm going to try and upgrade the Lionsmith's name. So we'll start with the Colonel's names. We will combine these. All of the greatest struggles end in death. The lore of the knife holds the lesson of those struggles. And dreamwise, I don't think we have any advantage to keeping Dread and Fascination on the board, so we'll just get rid of those. We don't have a summoning happening right now, but I am going to need another knock, so let's go back to the Street Strange by Moonlight. One thing I've debated about doing is actually uh, some videos that are more lore-specific. The challenge is, is that if I'm already struggling to get these videos done uh, sort of on time, uh, you know, adding more stuff to do is not going to to help the long term. You know, the long long term viability of this. So, to to be to be determined. It's gone. We're safe. So we have the rising heat. That's not going to help us with summoning. Um, but I am going to be able to use the subtle fracture. So we are going to be a little tight on fun. So I can go to Oriflames if it comes to it. But I am still interested. So you may be wondering why I'm trying to get the Caligin over the Precussigant first. And it is really just because I um, I don't know if the evidence is going to go away after the, uh, after the favor. So I want to get myself something that can steal or can destroy evidence uh, when the, if the need arises. Forge for the Smoky Spirit summoning winter for its binding. It must know who will rule it. Wisdom is a country, and these are its maps. Oop. So, happy for the contentment. Just doesn't really help me at the moment. I probably should have read the text for that. I apologize. The door's a vision swing. Okay, we've already done that. And the bronze spintrea. My follower is at work on the mirror. So there's nothing for them to take, so let hungers drive us. And a season of despair coming up, so we've made the right call in terms of getting rid of it. An ally in the shadows. I have called in a favor with a person of note. I'll prob it'll probably shield me, but nothing is certain. Ooh, I did not know that that was probabilistic. All right, the air is curdled now. I'm home again in this lump in flesh. Better, perhaps. And visions pass me with Pavane Grace, a window over a wood, a garden of ice, a shivering sun, a woman of glass. I will return home with reluctance. So, uh, I'm actually going to go back to the white door um, and see if we can find ourselves another favor from authority, just in case. Now I can approach the white door through the bounds. Now I can press my fingers to it, feel its chill, and watch it swing open. As it opens, my mouth closes, tightens, and heals over like a lost deformity. Around and about me is the cobalt light of the Mansus. Mirror is repaired. It shines again as it did once before. Okay, uh, talk-wise, I don't think there's a lot of value in trying to get rid of the notoriety. Um, we haven't done any commissions, so we don't have any talking we can do about that. Oop, a challenge. Grim Lessons. Uh, this is a puzzle with missing pieces. If I might find those pieces in the odd corners of scholarship. Uh, provide Dread, use a pit, or the Silent Intensity skill. Uh, I'm trying to think what I want to do with talk at the moment. I'd kind of like to get another prisoner, if I'm completely honest. It's nice to have those stacked up. Yep. 
I don't see any other needs right now. So, Rhaenyra. Do be go so good as to seduce a stranger for me. A sufficiently persuadable, dis uh, sorry, persuasive disciple can probably lure a susceptible companion back to us. Not all of Forge's children are bright, and its offcuts and its bastards gather in the bounds like hammer scale in the cracks of a smithy floor. Here comes one now. So I'll take the Caligean on uh, expeditions next. I don't have anything to summon a percussing. Oh, maybe I do actually. So I've got quite a bit of uh, rose pearl dust. So let's see. I think if we were to take the right of the seas fasting. So this right calls on the witch and sister to close the gap between what is and what might be. The adept pours or hurls an offering into water, preferably but not essentially the sea. So multiple references to the sea and the witch and sister. The witch and sister have a reference to um, to uh, heart. I actually just got a notification. I may have to leave reasonably soon. Um, but let's try and make a little more progress here. Uh, so that we need some edge for the percussigant. Oh! I don't have enough heart from that, so I could use the witch kissed oil, but I don't think I'm quite ready to give that up. And I don't have any edge. Okay, well, shame on me. Uh, let's go back to the Institute then. There's a dark and clinging smell at the Institute halls that never quite leaves one. Perhaps it is the paint, perhaps it is the patience, perhaps it is something in the walls. All right. I've been exonerated. The evidence is not sufficiently compelling to convict me, and I am free to go. All right. So there goes the favor. This is why we summon the Caligine. So in fact, I could do... I think I'm going to try and get rid of that evidence right away. So let's take the Church of the Bright Edge back. There's another who would ascend before me. A cautious scheme. All right. My rival is at their business in the shadows. They're still hiding. What exactly are they up to? So in this case here, we're just going to let this expire with Rhaenyra, and we will... Um, will let the Caligine destroy the destroy the evidence. Now, we are running a little low on funds. I wasn't originally going to convert this into cash, but we have been using the work, uh, work slot a bit. So this oddity is probably worth something, but it's hard to be sure. So in this case here, we're, we'll generate some cash while we, uh, while we wait. And we don't have any dread, so I don't need to worry about that. If I'd use the dread in the upgrade, I might be in a little bit of trouble, but we're fine. Once the mystique goes away, I'm going to start using more heart followers to um, to uh, kind of do the charm offensive. But clearing the clearing the evidence is important first. I realize we haven't been doing a whole lot mantis wise, but the the tr damning evidence was something I was really worried about. So we, for me, that that counts as a win. But it might be a little a little a little more minor uh, than what the usual expectations are. Okay, I will go to the Lodge of the Sage Knight just in hopes of getting the favor from authority. There's nothing else I really need here, so. Last night I visited the Lodge of the Sage Knight. My hostess manifested as an elegant woman with fashionably short hair and dark glasses. No, she admits, I don't need them anymore, any more than I need eyes. Allow me my sentimentalities. But you've come for knowledge, I expect. Here's a story I heard in my Karishim days. You're welcome to it. Only remember me if you come to make the pilgrimage. Okay. Uh, again, I'm still struggling to decide how I want to use my dream slots. It would be good to go through the peacock door again because it gets me the most... You know what? I am going to do that. Um, oh, no. That's not a good idea because the peacock door might generate dread. Nope, but it's going to generate dread after this goes away. So, Peacock door has most of the stuff that I want, so... Uh, and we could risk our health or use a prisoner. Now, I do have lots of prisoners. I am curious, though. I, I want to see what happens with the health if it fails. So, 
Total lack of interest. No one is impressed. The auctioneer's gavel bangs. My item is sold, but for a sum so trifling as to not be worth recording. Nothing then. Yep. Sorry, Rhaenyra, but we have evidence to get rid of. My scheme will most likely succeed. There is always a chance that something will go awry. So we'll try and sell another jumble again. It's probably good that we know the value of these things, but it's a shame. Okay, so turns out I can't summon the Percussigant. I am going to need to... Uh, I am going to need to... Oh yeah, that's maybe something I should have worked on, was getting, um, getting that influence. Okay. I basically need to go now, but... Let's let's try and let's try and get the evidence taken care of. There it is. Is that it? So we'll at least have the better edge edge lore. We can turn that into the higher level. Well, that'll turn into the lionsmith's name. So we'll upgrade that. Okay, so we knew that was coming, and we have got a season of ardors coming up. So if I need something with contentment, I will... Or, sorry, if I have a need for contentment, we know we can rely on that in about 90 seconds. And I think it's pretty obvious what we want here. So, Scholar Vac, before gods arose from blood, before ape stood upright, this was the language heard in the House of the Sun. Last night I opened the peacock door, and afterwards it spoke to me. I am Vac, it boasted, both the tongue and the goddess. I am the only entrance into secret light. I was worshipped before you upright apes, and I will still uh, will be still when all of you are ugly ash. Listen, and I will prove it. I woke with my mouth full of words. I've always really liked this moment where you, you know, you go to bed, you have this dream, and you wake up knowing a new language. But in practical terms, this has cracked open a couple more um, a, cr a couple more tomes for us, which is good. I'm gonna go straight to the spider's door just because we'll, our uh, followers will expire. The spider's door is always thirsty, always. The blood I have given leaks and threads and spills through the skin of the world, and the door drinks it with uh, and a moment's satisfaction swells its opening until I can pass. I await word. Okay, our second jumble did not sell. Minion is returned. The evidence has been destroyed. I am a little safer. I've done some good. My patients are quieter than when I began. And on that note, I think we are safe to end it. Um, so this time around, this is definitely dealing with mundane matters. We had the Suppression Bureau convinced that they were about to take me out and we relied on evidence that uh, Teresa Gallimer provided us through the White Door in the Lodge of the Sage Knight. And on top of that, uh, we did actually succeed in getting Vac. So the supernatural elements, um, or occult elements, uh, we did actually make what... This is going to be very subtle progress. So the fact that we are able to read Vac is definitely a big deal for me. Uh, but I realize that we, because we haven't read any any works yet, it doesn't doesn't feel like a big uh, accomplishment. What we'll probably wind up doing next, I do want to get a, a percussigant just so that we can head out to uh, head out to some expeditions again, uh, and then I will, you know, I, I've got two new books that I can start reading, so that's good news there. Uh, but really, I want to just get down to the the expeditions because once we upgrade the Lionsmith's names, there's really nothing else for me to do with my. Um, there's really nothing else for me to do lore-wise that, uh, you know, that gets me where I need to go. But all of that will be dealt with in the future. As always, thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry if uh, this one feels like a little bit more of a stalling. Um, I know a bit of good feedback that I got was that the, um, you know, the fact that this kind of guaranteed progress after an hour, I, I hope I didn't uh, go too far uh, off course on this. If you are enjoying the series and you've not done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, for those of you who do already enjoying it, uh, leaving a like or a comment definitely helps me get noticed. I certainly like interacting with you. And if you want to really go that extra mile, uh, feel free to share this with friends if you think that they might be interested in Cultist Simulator or just want something to fall asleep to in, in terms of the sound of my voice. Uh, I will see you in the next one. I will definitely talk a little bit less about lore and, and focus a bit more on the, the action unless something provokes it. But uh, I will 
save that for the next video. Have a great night.